I love it. We're not on the screen. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Adventures in Silverdale Campaign 4 Princesses of Power, Episode 42. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Tonight we are in the towards the end of this huge adventure from the water onto land and now towards the death book. Um, but if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and like button and subscribe and you'll see everything, including our maps that we release as well. And if you're on Twitch, use your rooter points. You know what we're talking about. Okay, cool. Let's get into it. Last time on episode 41 of Princesses of Power. The party teleported to the city of Veilcast within the Quinn dynasty, and after scouring the city for its closest entrance to the jungle, they stumbled upon an execution of a lizard folk. A smoke explosion takes over the proceedings and a shadowy figure is seen running off. After some chasing, the party comes to the conclusion that it was probably their sister Arista, and she ran into the sewers. Not wanting to get dirty, the party then takes to the sky and investigates wide swaths of the jungle caves and rocks, boulders, and even a burnt village to find the secret cave entrance. But no luck. They stumble upon a frightened lizard folk native of the jungle who relays to them that Veilcast hates the lizard folk. He is shown the symbol of the lizard folk that the Order of the Tides had contact with, and he reveals they are in the Gorgolon tribe, a secret tribe that is only reachable with a berry. Princess Seer comes to the conclusion that they are out of options just by looking in the jungle, so you all decide to talk to someone, therefore going back to find Arista. You go back and find Arista and her axolotl allies, Fizz and Harry. Um, they detail their escape from Eudothia and the destruction of their birth home, Lemuria. She then tells them she had a conversation with Queen Arisaline and helped her get to the secret tunnel that the party has been looking for. By breaking into the Centurium Library and reading her information from a book, the party tells Arista everything that she missed when she was gone, including the ending of the Bloating Plague. Arista reveals she gave false information to your mother because she could tell something was not right. The party is determined to beat Arisaline inside the cave into the death book, it appears which Princess Mizu and Voskar have been looking for this entire adventure. But first, you must break into the Centurium Library and steal a key. A 12-foot golden statue key. You are in the sewers. Fizz and Harry is sitting up against the wall. Looks like one of them's eating a sandwich with like some kind of like moldy bread that he's picking the mold off of. And Arista's just kind of like sitting in this light that's coming from that open shaft up and by herself, just flicking her tail. You know, the mold's the good part. You gotta, like, that's where you get the nutrients. Yeah, I used to think that too, you know? I had a little too much, and, uh, well, my tail don't really grow back no more. It flips it forward and it shows it's missing like three inches. Yeah. I don't know. I like the buzz that I get in my mouth whenever I, I'm, I'm just gonna take. And I'm gonna take the rest of his bread. Oh, that yeah, he's been sure. picking off. Yeah, thanks. So tell me, how uh how are things out there? You know, we got here easy peasy, let me squeezy. But you went through uh ending the bloating plague. What happened? That That's about it. Wow. We got Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of robots or whatever we call them. Yeah. Automatons. I don't know what you're talking about, actually. War for like you, Yeah, they're like metal people just walking around. Oh, All of yeah, them like great. robots. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I almost died twice. Pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Exhilarating. Mm hmm. You hear this, Fizz? Yeah, I hear him. Oh, Fizz doesn't believe you. I believe him. Don't start stupid stuff, Harry. I don't believe you. I think you had something else that happened. Something juicy. Here, take some more mold. Okay. Yeah, actually, um... Yeah, uh, there was, a, like, God came down. And, um... And they were like, hey... You're our chosen warrior. We can't let you fall. 
uh, and then they just brought me back up. And, you know, I'm just going off of uh, it's a divine mission. What? What kind of god? Um, the uh, spiteful one. Not, not a very happy one, because, you know, clearly they want me to fight something. Um, yeah. You know, that's real funny you say that. Because uh, this whole key thing you guys are talking about got the head of a triceratops. That's a dinosaur. And you want to know why? Why? It's because they worship gods around here. And a long time ago, Arista read it in that book. They worship the god called Chotuku. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think that was them. I think that was them, actually. Chotuku. Yeah. It's coming back to me. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, oh, yeah? that was the guy. Uh huh. Yeah. That's crazy. Hmm. All right, guys. We're gonna get moving here soon, okay? I'm getting the more. I sit, the more I think about charm. Yeah, Fizz gets uh, anxious now. Does everyone know what they're they're? Is everyone ready to do their part? Does everyone kind of like understand what's going on? Oh yeah, I need my spell scroll to do my part. I also need my spell scroll. Uh, Misu's yeah. gonna reach in and hand it to them and go. <laughs> and I'm on guard duty, like flirting, right? I mean, if that's how you want to get it done. I mean, probably... You can go multiple ways with it, Mizu. Probably the most effective way, to be honest, the quickest, uh, usually takes no more than ten seconds for one of them to fall for me. From the shadows. Okay. What am I supposed to do? Oh, I forgot uh, he's here. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I guess, if, if it's not working, oh, yeah. maybe possess them and, and like... Pretend a guy's having a heart attack or something. I don't know. They'll need a distraction one way or another. Uh, well, I, I, I can't really. Yeah, why don't you help now. me do? I mean, I, not to, not to like be, but like I, I do think seeing a demon walk by might be pretty distracting, just off principle. Um, also, Voskar is Voskar, so Voskar, if. Mizu, if you want to chaperone Voskar and let Voskar be the distraction and just let him do what Voskar does, that could be could save you some time. Just, just suggestion. We could work together. I mean, I'm down for that, but what do you mean you can't possess people anymore? Well, my deal with Bruntoro is very specific and entrapping in the Underdark. So for me to spend more time here, I have to sacrifice certain strengths. Uh -uh. I mean, maybe when all this is over, I could talk to him for you. I mean, I'm 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 kind of cool with some of his associates. I could maybe have them put it like a good word for you. Maybe get some of your power back. I believe me. So if we find the death book, you and I will gain a lot more power with Bruntoro. Fair enough. Fair enough. So wait a second, did Bruntoro make you come out here because you disappointed him? Or was this a request for you to spend more time out here and thus sacrificing something? I found I would be more useful side by side with Mizu, the princess. So it was a command. It was a wish that I expressed to my god. You wish oh. to be out here in person with me? Well, you didn't say it like that earlier. He didn't necessarily say to be with you, Mizu, just so we're clear. No, he literally at... just said, like, and I quote, I came out to be with you. I look over at Mira. It kind of sounds like he doesn't trust her to do it by himself. By herself. That's kind of awkward. It seems like they both have trust issues, if you ask me. Oh, well, I know Mizu does, because you met her. Yeah. The and I don't most, trust Vaskar, so. Most toxic power couple I've seen in a while. <laughs> Are we, are we gonna put that label on it? Couple? I mean, haven't they both in their minds already look at them lusting? I don't know, that, that last time, that box said, I don't love <laughs> Mizu, so I mean, he's, he's still in my book trying to figure that out, but Mizu, do you, would you consider <laughs> yourself dating Foscar? Are you like a couple? Um, I mean, I date a lot of people, but like that doesn't make us a couple. So you're Polly? Maybe? I don't know. I mean, a lot of people really do love me. It's just like the me loving them like back in return thing that's kind exactly. of the hard part for me. Mm, I don't think power poly really works in the... So I don't think it's gonna count. Okay. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It's fine. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm more into the idea of like maybe like me as like a figurehead and just having like a lot of men who like really love me and adore me and worship me is like my followers. I think that's more of my like uh, vibe. It's honestly because I want the death book. I mean, this is for no one's hiding anything here. I feel like you're hiding your feelings, Bhaskar. <laughs> Calm down. I mean, that's not what you were seeing in the market, but now that we're in front of other people, I guess it's a different story. Right? What a man. What happened, what happened in the market? Something you know what? Forget it. I'll make a distraction myself. Mrs. is going to say, wait for me, and she's going to go running <laughs> off uh, after him. I'm going to interrogate him, but all right. Uh, Missy, I think things are starting to move. Oscar's kind of a wild card. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, she's going to put her hood on. Um... All right, listen, when we get inside the library, um, there's a very specific way I'd like to get in. So as long as you can get me in, I can get close enough, and I can bag it. What is the specific way you want to get in? Yeah. No, if you can just oh, wait, get yeah, you... me in, once I get in, I have a specific way I learned that I like to go. Oh, okay, so here's, I, I guess we should let you know. So I'm just going to turn into, well, me right now is just going to turn into a little bitty little bitty spiders i'm just gonna ride on you so however you want to get in that's great i will just i'll cast pass without trace so you can be extra sneaky and then once we're inside we will unwild shape pop the scroll we'll both use our scrolls you bag the key and then we turn back into spiders and then you get out does that work for you that sounds perfect perfect and see her starts to wave her hands. She puts the her uh, scepter into the, the sewer water. She kind of like sprays it around her and she casts Pass Without Trace. Uh, for anyone who wants it, I know Mizu doesn't need it. And also she left. Um, I'll take one. <laughs> yeah, me, you, Rissy. Are you going with us? I Celia, are you, am you're, not... you're on distraction, <laughs> right? So I, guess you... I think I'm just beating a guy up for fun. <laughs> and I look to the two axolotls. <laughs> Are we just beating a guy up? Like, it seems like an adjacent quest. Uh, as long as we can do it quietly. Um, so I will give it to to all of us, and then if you make a stealth check, you will have that ability, and it lasts for an hour, or unless I drop, drop concentration, which I don't plan to, unless I die. Um, so, uh, myself, Mira, Celia, and then the two other axolotls. Oh, and Arissa. So all the axolotls. So that's not the, the power... Polly. Okay, great. Yeah, I'm not oh, yeah. Plus 10 to dexterity uh, saving throws. Or we have plus 10 to our uh, stealth checks. So yeah. sorry. Just, just uh, stealth. Yeah, just stealth. And so I, I cast that, and then um, I walk shape into a spider, and I, I put my hand on uh, uh, Arissa's top of her head, because she's so tiny, and then I walk shape into a spider, so that my spider form is just on top of her head, and I'll kind of like crawl around to her shoulder. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna wild shape into a spider, but I'm not gonna think that far ahead like Seer did, and I'm gonna wild shape onto the ground. Just crawl my way. Don't step on me. It's gonna take you so long to get in there. <laughs> like I hope I you know. Move at speed. It's okay. <laughs> okay. I look I kinda of make eyes at Dawn. I, I make eyes at Rissy and I'll telepathically speak to her. She can't communicate back, but she can hear me, and I'll say can you pick up that spider right there? That's Mira. Yep. She's gonna dip her tail down, which is like this massive, like, Ghibli <laughs> Totoro. Latch on. Picks you up, and, and just immediately <laughs> she goes invisible. So if you're able to see, it's two tiny little spiders floating in the air with super dexterity reflecting off light, just perfectly invisible with her. Um, yeah, you guys take off. Immediately, you see Arista's, like, running full force on the ground. You pass Voskar, who's just trudging down the street, and Mizu, who's, like, caught up with him, who's, like, trying to brush past him and be in front. Um, you guys get to this big stone, looks like one floor building with a big dome, almost like a planetarium style. Um, and there's these big doors that someone is opening to go inside and you see they have these credentials on their like sash thing that's very nice it's very colorful but has like that same dome shape out of stone and with the the way it's like almost like epcot ball it has like different shapes in that dome and it matches this so you know it's some sort of credential 
And as the door opens, Arista dives in. You guys spin into a loop. She's against the wall before she jumps up and crawls up the wall. She starts running along the walls until you, she just stops. And you see down this hallway, it opens up into this big room that's like really bright white stone. And you see there's books and shelves that are all facing the center of the room. None of the shelves are... So, like, the center of the room almost looks uh, Congress-like. I will show you. Make the best be quick. Show us Congress! But at the end of the hallway is a booth with a very vibrantly colored human librarian she looks about 30s um she's got books and she's talking with these two halfling guards and you see past them are different guards all through the library and she just pauses for a second can they see like us yet or are we still outside um Um. voskar trudges up to the front and just kind of looks around and then just looks at you and says not all my power and then takes his hands and runs up and grabs the side of the building but it just crushes the stone wall in and his hands clamp together and you see like black sludge come out of his hand almost like blood or something as it hurt and just rips the side and as it does you see there's like uh, a desk or two of administrative rooms where people just like get up and scream and start running away as he just like kicks, kicks a, bit a bit of the bit wall. Uh, Mizu's going to go, ah, bad boy, no, sir, I did not raise you like that. And then she's going to give him a wink uh, if he like turns to look at her. He's just going to reach back and grab this woman that's trying to go by, by her like clothes on the back and just kind of hold her up and then hold her. Oh, she's kind of strong as she's wiggling and she's like, please yelling out for you to help. And he's holding her parallel with the ground and just has like fire burning in his eyes. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, ma'am. He's never like this at home. I guess something about us being on vacation has just got him all riled up. Foscar put her down. Roll an intimidation check. Oh my god. He's in her Razzling era. Come on, girl. 21. (laughs) He just kind of like turns her right side up and then just kind of pushes her away as she fumbles and stumbles to get up and just walks right up to you. His face is almost completely above you as he has to like crouch over and he's like, I am not your pet. I am used to living without friends. I do not love you. She's gonna go uh, between her teeth, like, play along, dumbass. Like, but to where the other lady can't hear her. Persuasion check. His feelings are real life hurt. That's right. 27! <laughs> <laughs> you see the fire go out in his eyes, and it's just that black obsidian. Okay, what do I do? What? that book or not. Duh. She's gonna reach in her bag and she's gonna pull out uh, a bone and she's gonna like hold it out for him and she's gonna go, "Ah, good boy, good boy. And then uh, she's gonna drop it on the ground and go over to the lady and go, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Are you all right? You'll have to excuse my pet. I thought he was better trained than this. She just looks fucking terrified up against a tree that's in that small little patch of nature in the city. And is just looking out, and Voskar's like turning at her, and just grabs the bone from the ground, and puts it in his mouth, and bites down, and shatters all over the ground. And she, Are you alright? Are you hurt? And she's gonna like be looking at the woman and examining her. Roll a straight charisma check, but because Voskar's doing what he's doing, disadvantage. Uh, 14. She's just gonna find her way off of the tree and say, It's alright, it's everything is alright, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And she's going to just kind of run away while looking back into the city. And then you just see people who are looking, kind of see what's happening. A couple people just kind of start pointing, Hey, look, what? what?" uh, You see different people start to notice things and it's starting to create a 
ricochet of people down this city street leading away from the centurion. Uh, she's going to approach Voskar again, and uh, she's going to reach up, and she's going to, like, she probably can't reach his head, but she's going to, like, attempt to reach his head, kind of in, like, that manner of giving him, like, head pats as a pet, you know? Um, and she's going to, like, she's going to turn to him, and she's going to say, their whole thing here is, like, displays of strength and power. If we want to get anywhere here, we got to make them afraid of us. There's got to be another way. I mean, we're, we're going to get the book regardless. I mean, fuck. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry I have to pretend you're my pet, but, like, these people aren't going to know a difference. They're dumb as fuck. Guards start running up. Um, he doesn't even look at them. He's just looking at you, trying to figure out, like, how the fuck you think. It's just... Mm, it's go One guard runs up, and he just... Voskar swats away like big spear he's pointing out just snaps it right in half hey! and the guard yells and other guards start coming up and he just starts circling you and he's like I don't need to think about how to make people fear me princess and once I get the death book no one will have to get close enough to ever want to be my friend again and just starts swatting at these halfling guards just making all this noise Arista standing there in the stillness. You can hear it echoing throughout the halls. Voskar and Mizu are making noise. The guards leave their post and start running down the hallway. And the librarian just sits and stands at the desk and puts down her book and just her hands on her hips. Um. Okay, now we get in. Arista drops down, scurries right past the librarian. You, you just run and see underneath her as you run under... And Arista jumps on this railing into this room in front of you. This gold yep. statue in the middle of the room. So, Easter's not there, Bosco's not there. It is. Oh, that's supposed to be a fight. This is scary. Look at that. Like, oh, there are guards everywhere inside this library. So, uh. she jumps on the rail immediately and takes you guys over here the statue in the middle of the room she kind of whispers she's kind of tucked behind the post on that second floor looking about 12 feet down at that little halfling guard and she says is this close enough to use the spell scroll mm -hmm. good question because the range of that spell is uh, hold <laughs> Tanner do you know I can look it up let's see I didn't think about that. Reduce and large. 30 feet. I feel like it's... Oh, 30 feet? We need to be 10 feet closer. I think we're currently 40 feet from the statue. Okay, well... Okay, they're gonna... We have a very difficult chance of running in front of this. I mean, it's one thing to be stealthy, and it's another to run right in front of everyone's face. So... Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm kind of... Hoping that Arista will make her way more towards the back on that lower level so we're tucked away a bit and can kind of potentially hide in these bushes as we unwild shape behind the statue would be ideal from a Mira battle standpoint. Okay, so Arista immediately is going to jump over this stairwell to the other side. However, it is bright there and you are two spiders that will reflect a tiny bit of light and that guard is looking that direction even though Arista is invisible. So both of you roll me a stealth check. It's going to be a pretty low DC because you are spiders. But just if he notices specks in front of his face. Dirty 20. Perfect. He notices nothing. Arista keeps running around buzz, 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 buzz. right in front of a guard's right. face that is kind of looking straight forward and she kind of tucks down. Uh, make it kind of look like you guys are closer to the railing. And then get right on this ledge here. Okay. Okay, there's gonna be many eyes with me jumping down, okay? So, both of you roll a higher DC stealth check to get to those bushes, because there are Hail. multiple pairs of eyes in this library staring. A 30? 31? Oh, oh no way! Oh, because it's a plus 10. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yes, okay. Roll a dirty 20. <laughs> it's like a tiny speck in the night. You guys get right here in between these two bushes tucked away. 
But there is a librarian's assistant standing on the opposite end who is picking up some of these books and he's looking at them. And he's just looking directly over his book a little bit when he just peruses, looking at those bushes, looking at the other books on the floor. Um, can we still hear uh, any noise or commotion coming from outside? Is it, is it, was it just like super faint or was it... I don't know, like, can we, it was echoing down like the a, hall, but now that okay, you're okay. in here, the acoustics in this place kind of just stay kind of in a bubble in a way, so it's harder to hear from things on the outside. You just hear echoes of yourself. And the guards don't seem like they're making their way out by any means. Um, a couple saying. of them at the front did. So those two that were at the steps, I didn't take them off. They are not there anymore, and she was standing like up here. Okay. But that's all the way on the other side of the room. And about this time, she's going back to her desk, still curious, looking at things. Um, are there any uh, windows in this building? No. Okay, okay. And the one way in, one way out? Yep. Okay, okay. Cool be that. Right. I'm like, do we wait for Mizu to create a bigger scene, or... I'm like kind of looking over at Sierra, like, is now the moment, or... Question mark? Yeah, so you're, so you're having the exact same thought you're having. Uh, she's like, mm. also, you know, like, Mizu making a scene, like, it's it's always just, it does snowball. So it's like, okay, we've, we've got step one. We've heard them. And so I, I, I would hope that it can get a little more chaotic, but also I'm, I'm like, power reading through spells to see, like, what I can do to... All right, well, let's give you some more time. Anything. Back outside, um, way see. off from what we have been seeing before, you see uh, Celia walking down the street. Uh, hey, hold on, hold on, wait up! I'm coming with you. So, so I forgot your legs were so small. I slow my pace. Hey, you got long legs. Yeah, yeah. Arista usually runs with us when we're uh, when we're walking, so I don't. Oh yeah, you gotta forgive me. I had a big sandwich yeah. on my belly. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so, oh no, yeah. you no, you go ahead. I was just, it, like, was it turkey? It tasted like it was turkey. Uh, oh, no, it was, uh, I think it was uh, triceratops meat. Yeah? Oh, is yeah. that easy to get around here? Uh, it was for me, I stole it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I like uh, you. Oh, thanks. Well, that's good seeing how he's going to be hurting together. Yeah. Wait, we're good, like, we're going to be us hurting, or like... Well, I hope uh, he's going to be doing the one hurting. Yeah, that's why I was, okay, cool, freezing, you know, I was just making sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, can you, like, are you going to point out the guy that we have to... Oh, you betcha. Okay, okay, sick. Yeah. Sick. Oh, there he is. Okay, cool, cool. Yep, right there. Yeah. Uh, is you, he alone? Is he <laughs> you look over, and it seems like it's people who are all rushing together in this group where guards are trying to hold back this big demon, and Mizu standing there with the demon. And it's just a crowd of people, and he's like, yeah, right there. As soon as we like get to that guy and take his credentials, we're good. We might not even have to hurt him. You're pointing to a crowd of people. I don't know which one you're, you're pointing oh, to. Oh, I'm sorry. It's... Yeah, let me, I, I can't... I put my face down to, like, where his get hand close. is pointing. Get like, oh, sorry if you can smell sandwich. Right there. You see him? Yep. That guy? That guy. <laughs> I roll roll a perception check. <laughs> 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 oh boy uh, I rolled a 5 I think I got him <laughs> perfect uh, alright how you want to do this um well just to like make my morals a little bit better you said that you were gonna uh Bane being attacked by this guy so that I can swoop in and save you and then I'll feel better about beating him up. All right. You're right. That was the plan. All right. This is what we'll do. You go over there, touch the guy, get his attention. So he's looking in my direction, and then I'll pounce. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to walk up to the first guy I see, I guess. Okay. Directly in front of me. Mm -hmm. And tap him on the shoulder. Yeah. What's going on? This is crazy. So uh, many guards. Look out. What? Huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. What's out there? 
Have you seen anything like this before? Yeah, uh, pff, no. Um... You okay? Yeah, on, yeah, I'm just curious, on the, so, on the social ladder, where do you, where do you stand? Uh, this, I, I'm sorry, my name is Henry Starwall. I don't think we've met before. Where are you from? Around. Uh, you're popular, not popular? <laughs> My family is quite popular. We make shoes around here. I'm gonna look back at the... the guy. I'm gonna... Something, what's over there? Um, the you see nobody's <laughs> over there. As you're looking around, roll me another perception check. <laughs> Uh, eight. <laughs> okay, as you're looking, you just see someone <laughs> over in a crowd of people that's part almost near the demon. Hey! And you just see he's like start punching towards the air, punching down at something. You see some punching. Um, and the guy looks over. Oh, look. What? Uh, he's hurting. My, he's messing my friend up. Come help me out. Uh, all, all right. What was your name again? Ah, uh, my name's Celia. Celia. Nice to meet you, Celia. All right. Nice to meet you. He's, Let's go. He's going to run over with you. As you run over. <laughs> I'm going to jump and punch the guy in the face. <laughs> Roll an attack. Absolutely. Oh. It's a uh, 26 to hit. <laughs> um. <laughs> and you just run up and clock the guy out. And as you do, you look down and there is Harry, who goes, Yeah, he was attacking me! Thank you for saving me, Celia! That was my friend! Hey! And then the guy runs up on you, Oh, what happened? Is, is there a riot? Yeah! Uh, as Mizu hears that, uh, somebody say, Is there a riot? She's gonna pull out her uh, little, like, orb. Uh, thing that she has, and she's gonna go record, <laughs> and she's gonna turn to Voskar and go, kill them all. You see the fire reignite in Voskar's eyes, and he turns to the citizens inside this area of Veilcast as his claws kind of drip and extend, like, inside the mouth of a xenomorph, and just walks forward almost with that slow motion that he's making to himself of joy and just starts shredding. Like, almost like you'd see Homeland or like you wanted to do in The Boys, just wants to shred them all. Um, as the guy who's helping you yells, uh, ha uh, Harry looks at you, Celia, and is like, We gotta get out of here! Um, inside of the library, um, you hear the librarian scream as she looks out and the guards are all falling out of the library in through uh, outside however there still remains some at the door there is four at the doorway here I'll put them on the map her. Um, Seir uh, looks over at uh, uh, Mira and says, uh, get behind one of the planners. And then I'm going to go behind this planner that I'm already next to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to crawl off of her and just like put myself behind it and I'll wait for Mira to get in place. And I will telepathically message uh, Arissa. As soon as it shrinks, grab it. Um, you and see I'm from her cloak, she brings out her bag of holding and nods at you. I look to, is Mira in place? Okay, I look at you, and I yeah. count down, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna count down, we're gonna unwild shape, hit the scroll, and we're gonna back in the wild shape. We're goes, fucking doing it. two, one, and see her, like, <laughs> dead things fall off her. She's, like, kind of in a cross position, and she opens the scroll, and it goes and it goes from 12 feet to 6 feet, and then and it then goes... And then Mira opens three, hers, three. and it goes 6 to 3. And then Arista and then jumps up at the bag of holding over top of it, barrel rolls, ties it, and points to her shoulders and looks at the door. I start <laughs> jumping and mid jump transform again. Yeah, literally, literally the same thing. She like she like goes the leap at her and she like is just turning into like her hand is reaching out and the hand is the is the spider that's on her shoulder again. She's like, 
I learned oh. from the first time about doing this. <laughs> Arista runs! As she's running, you see the guards at the front door. Um, alarms are now going off outside. There is a riot. The guards run out of the door. <laughs> the librarian gets scared. She runs outside the door about a foot and then pulls a lever, and it locks with this grate on the library to make it secure, and she stands at the door, just waiting nervously. Arista almost slams into the gate and stays. You can see the librarian. The guys are running down the hallway to the doorway that's open. You can see the riot for the first time. Arista goes, Dad, nab it! Out loud. Uh, you got in. <laughs> okay. Did it go? What? You see, immediately as she says it, the librarian turns around, and Arista scoots to the wall. Plus ten to stealth. It hasn't been ten minutes. Um, and the librarian just kind of looks and then just looks back in her original position. Arista goes, okay, hmm. I don't have a plan for this. Okay, so we're locked in and the librarian's on our side? Yeah, is on the outside of the door. But I'm like wondering if Arista can like make another distraction elsewhere in this room that she might go and investigate so we can pull this lever and get out. Oh, can I... Can I see the? Like, can we see her through these bars? Yeah, the, it's almost like, like a the... castle gate bars, but that's like small squares, so you can't pass through. Well, we can. We're spiders. You two can, yeah. <laughs> you two can. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> so, um, I don't want to kill this librarian. I could. <laughs> That'd be easy. I mean, there's already a way. riot happening. We can blame it on the riot. I'm a good person. <laughs> Same. Um, we need to get out of here. Uh, roll a perception check. Perception. Yeah. Both of you. That's as Arista's a, oh, okay. leaning Ooh. at this grate, looking at the librarian, looking down the hallway. Yeah, awesome. 28. Oh, mine wasn't a 28. Mine was a 23. <laughs> Both of you still are able to see through the door in this riot where you see Voskar is tearing up people. You see with his, like, hooded... Um, little axolotl folk friend is standing there on this body, rips off from the shirt that dome emblem that is you can get into the library with um, and as Celia's running he just grabs onto Celia and says we gotta get to this and he points as you look down the hallway roll perception Celia absolutely Oh shit! It's a six. <laughs> you look and you see Mizu standing there, Mizu what are you doing? Uh, Mizu was, like, the orb was originally floating around her, but now she's actually got it in her hand, almost like a camcorder kind of, like, situation, and she's <laughs> walking around, uh, the riot, getting, like, the best shots of, like, Voskar, uh, decimating people. Uh, Celia's gonna mouth. Uh, she's gonna scream a couple times, too. Some really, like, high-pitched screams thrown in there to just, like, escalate the level of chaos. And uh, she's going to turn the camera around, too, and, like, smile at one point. Uh, and she's going to go, uh, we're working on uh, killing the Quins, as you can see, just like uh, we were told that we were going to do. And she's going to continue showing the riot and scream some more. Damn, that, it, that's, that is good right there, okay. <laughs> that's that longevity it. bit. That like war. I love. <laughs> oh. Celia, you see this? You two see each other? For the first time, chaos around you. What are you? Get, what are you two doing? You're just watching her. <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll I'll run towards the library. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. You, you, as you just run past her to the library, uh, Harry throws up to you the credentials. As you're running down this hallway, guards are passing you because they're really concerned what's going in there. Mm -hmm. One of them turns to say something to you, but you're way past him, and he's coming to you. I got credentials. Oh, oh! Uh, the, <laughs> the library's closed! And he just runs off, and you get up, and you see the librarian. Uh, excuse me, the library's closed right now. What's going on outside? I, I've, I, I've got to get into the library. I have credentials. I'm sorry, the library isn't <laughs> closed. There is a riot. This, these credentials are supposed to let me into the library. Uh, she looks down at your credentials. Roll a persuasion check. Arista, get closer to the door. <laughs> Ar okay. Arista leans into the door so you can hear and see. I'm just gonna get... If that thing opens, I'm like... Get. I just need it close enough that I can get into... Uh, uh, see his head and be like, hit the lever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're within 15 feet. Oh, perfect. 
you hear in your head, and I was, I, I think it's a lever, right? Like, I would say whatever she did, like, you hit, pull the lever. Hit the lever. Yeah, uh, hit the, pull the, pull the lever, let us out! <laughs> We've got it! Um, I rolled a 12. 12. I am. Um, those are credentials, yes, but the library is closed right now. There is a riot going on. Is everyone okay? Please, I've really got to return a book. Well, give it to me. I'll, I'll take it. Thank you so much. I would feel so much better putting it back myself and knowing that it's there. The, the librarian hears in their head, let him in. Who is that? Chaos. Back in back in singing said. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So you, you hear me in your brain telling, hearing, pull the lever, and there's a lever out in front of that door next oh, to the I library. Oh, I can just I can, can just let myself in, and I pull the lever. Uh, as you pull the lever, the gate opens. Arista darts out with them on her shoulder past you guys. You can't see them; they're invisible. Uh, they see you as Arista's flying by, and she just reshuts it. Excuse me, sir. Credentials are not. The library is closed. I okay. I'll be back tomorrow, but I'm gonna be far less happy, and I'm gonna turn and storm off. You're welcome back tomorrow, sir. There is civil unrest right now. <laughs> That's a rare for Veilcast. I mean, come on, <laughs> right? Um, outside, oh goodness, you see, about your games. <laughs> um, dinosaurs have charged into the field because Veilcast has called in their second guard, which are trained dinosaurs. And Voskar is like on top of a Velociraptor trying to break its neck. It's got a big chunk out of Voskar, and he just looks back at Mizu and just kind of points and goes, "I'll keep the distraction going." Take it home! And he's just going to, like, ride out this dinosaurs. These guards are throwing spears, and there's alarms going off. You see him Definitely kind of at this point. get pummeled in between these two buildings, and there's got to be 50 guards over here now with dinosaurs. And, um... Uh, Ar Can't that, right? Arista just takes off, and she says, I'm going back to the sewers! Tell them we're going to the sewers! She's just going to run around them, because nobody can see you. Um, and if, if we're passing people who, like, are in our party, I'll telepathically leap into their head and be like, We're going back to the sewers! We're going back to the sewers! We're going back to the sewers! And so, I, anyone she, like, is near, and I will just scream into their head. And Arista will take off to the sewers. <sighs> Got out. This one-way radio is really useful. When Celia is walking out of the library hallway into this chaos, you, there's blood everywhere. There's, like, a trail of destruction off to these two buildings where we see <laughs> cars in a fight he probably can't win against dinosaurs and people. And Mizu's no, there no, filming the whole thing at January 6th. <laughs> 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 yeah, she flips the camera back to herself like at several points too. I have to like, you know, like just doing my job. Yeah. No, not Mizu's pretty Trump. Stop. <laughs> um, she's going to stand there for a little bit longer. I don't think she's immediately going to run back to the sewer uh, just to see what's going on with him. Uh, I'll go. Uh, uh, Voskar can eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that might be helpful. But I also don't like Catholics. So I'm like, I guess I can... You're okay, as everyone, everyone takes off, uh, Mizu, you just met find... A folk and they talk about dying. You find yourself there. Um, roll me a um, constitution check. This is the best I can get to a concentration. A 17? The sound around you kind of warps out a bit, kind of puddles. And you hear in your mind, Please, Misu, for me, stop the violence. We will be good now. Come home. And you know it's your father. Seeing everything you're filming. Can I speak back to him? You can try. Mm, that doesn't sound like he's gonna hear it, so <laughs> I think I'll just keep my mouth shut and continue <laughs> filming for a little bit longer. It's like, what? I didn't oh hear you, God. Daddy. I got bad service over here. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh. Out in this club. I can't okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, as everyone's running back to the sewer, 
it's gonna this fight that's transpiring with Boscar is gonna take a bit, so I'm gonna go to the sewer really fast and we'll come back. Alright, we go to the sewer, everyone kinda ducks back in, everyone kind of takes off their hood and stuff, regroups. Harry's like, Celia, you good? Uh, yeah, are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Harista, you good? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I think we did like the best case scenario. Well, I was, was it up there? Was that part of the plan? Because there's, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of dead people up there right now. There's so many dead people. You, Why did you start a riot as a distraction? I did. Well, I, I don't. I, it was happening as I walked up. It was a good distraction, I will say. Um, it was. I, I, should, it's Mizu and Voskar. Should we go and like tell them to stop? Because I feel like they would just continue to Continue kill going. You're not wrong about that. Mm, I'd yeah, be more yeah, concerned that. about just making sure Mizu stays safe and not imprisoned somewhere. Voskar, I don't care. That. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. So are we uh, going to get Mizu before discussing this? We could just leave this here, right? Nobody's coming, nobody's coming out of the sewers. I mean, I'll hold it. You hear from the other side, it's just Vafiel sitting on the bench. I mean, oh, hey. yeah. You should you not. Go, you want to go, go heal those there. people who are dying out there? Yeah, oh, I, you should go up there. I've been hearing what's going <laughs> on. A and I'm gonna let you guys do your thing. Uh, let me just take a rest. He has blood spots. Um, useless. <laughs> no, he can carry aren't things. You, aren't you a cleric? <laughs> this is your domain. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess I mean I guess heading back up as Sa'ir to. <laughs> to go and get her sister. I'm just like, I'm about to drag her out of war. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. going with. Arista's going to stay back with Vafiel to tell, like, just hound him about how important these books are, the statue, and some books she also grabbed while she was in there, and they're going to talk. Er. All right, you guys take back out there. Uh, during the, at that time, Mizu has been watching as Voskar is getting pummeled quite a bit to a point where they've got him, like, tied down to the ground, and he's got a body count in the double digits. Strode about. about place this, this will be, be a terrible event uh mizu at this point is gonna go okay that's enough stop recording and she's gonna take it and she's gonna put it in her pocket and uh she's gonna cast uh, banishment on voskar smart and that immediately sends him back to his original plane which would be the underdark voskar is back and now has to use your power again to get back under your command uh, uh, after seeing yeah. all of this happen, um, she's going to kind of walk up to the scene where everything was going on and kind of check out what's going on now. Like, what's the vibe over there now that he's disappeared? Uh, I, okay, well, let me describe the scene before you choose to walk up. Let me describe the scene before you choose to walk up because it's, they just got him pinned down on ropes on the ground. There's like 50 guards around, halfling guards. There's, like, on the outer, outer ring, probably distance you are from that, on the outside of different streets watching of commoners, um, there are bodies thrown everywhere. There are people that were, like, hiding in different parts that are, like, just now coming out, and they're all freaking out because it just disappeared, so all those guards are around, like, trying to figure out what just happened. So you're probably at a safe distance, anywhere closer, and everyone's going to be like, hey, you, what are you doing? You know, you're going to get questioned. Uh, is there one guard that looks like he might be of, like, a higher, like, ranking than the other? They call, all kind of look like equal playing field. There is one that has kind of talking to a bunch and then going over to this cart that was being pulled by this smaller-sized dinosaur. Um, kind of opening door, talking, going back and giving instructions. Either him or that, or that cart. cart. Uh, Mizu's gonna start to approach him, and she's gonna have a big smile on her face, and she's gonna go, Did you like the show? Princess Mizumino of the Azirian Kingdom. And <laughs> stick her hand out. I'm sorry, excuse me, what did you say? Did I, I enjoy the, the show? show? Yeah. Did you enjoy the show? Uh, I've heard Velcast is all about, you know, displays of power and all that, and, uh, Y'all are really famous for your, like, fighting ring over there, right? He's gonna look over at two guards. Guards! Like, you're gonna see two or three. He's gonna motion over. This one is highly suspicious. She looks very different. Make, Make sure, sure you, you learn everything you can from her. And he's gonna open that card door. Oh. <laughs> My name must not precede 
my face here, uh, obviously. Uh, Princess Muzu Mino of the Azirian Kingdom. I'm actually an uh, exotic pet trainer. You've never heard of me before? Persuade. Uh, no, uh, uh, um, deception check. Was a 17? I have not heard of you, madam. I have other matters to attend to right now. We have a massacre on our hands. Please. He's going to go up and close the door, and the guards are going to look at you. A massacre on your hand? Yeah, it was a display of power. Just like a veil cast custom. Am I right? I mean, uh, the whole reason I just put on that show with you with my little pet is to see if maybe I could strum up some business with you guys. I'm like really well known on the other side of the seas uh, for uh, my pets. Okay, trainer, you want to be a fighter? First, uh, you'll start, start in, in the dungeon. dungeon. Me? Uh, a fighter? Look at me, please. No, I'm a saleswoman. I'm a businesswoman, please. Did you have something to do with this? Uh, absolutely. This. This is my pet. Are, are you gesturing over your shoulder? Uh, yeah, to like where he was, like where all the guards were, are like huddled, confused still. Just so it's clear. This demon is your pet? Yeah, I, I trained him. How else do you think I made him go away that fast? <laughs> Roll a persuasion check. That was a nat 20 for a 29. The game said, here you go. He turns and yells at the guards. The guards are now swarming um, around to you as he's yelling out to you. We have found you. All right, what are you doing here? Where are you from? Have you guys considered in investing in stronger guards? Because to be honest with you, that wasn't even my best one. That was like one of my weaker ones. Uh, I, I really thought Vilcast was like known for its its strength and its power. I mean, you're infamous for your fighting here, but a little pet like that took out that many guards? I mean, seems like your leaders could really invest in some uh, stronger security. Intimidation check. Let's see if how high the street can go up. That's a 15. The guards just kind of just stand around, and the one kind of comes back out of the cart. Okay. Put your spears down. And then he looks over at the door, and you just hear from inside the cart, call snow. And the the guy who's opening the door of the cart looks in, and you hear inside the cart, ah, yes, I forgot. I'll take care of it then. And then he looks at you, Mizu, and says, come with me, and points inside the cart. No problem. And uh, if you're worried about your uh, little weakling uh, guard friends, uh, I've got plenty of friends that are already here in the area that could uh, help you bring him back. Very well. Just holds the door open for you. Uh, she's wow. gonna get in. And I guess she's gonna, because Celia was in the area and she was aware of it, so I guess she's gonna kind of look around and see if Celia's still there, because she doesn't I, She doesn't really realize that everybody left yet, I feel like, even though Seer did tell her in her mind. She's still in the Yeah, as you look back, nope, you don't see any of them there. Okay, she'll get in. We heading that way. All right, but door closes about that time. That's when you guys all enter just in time enough because your passive perception is higher to see that door close with Mizu in it. But that's where we're going to take a bathroom break. Mizu. Right. You. <laughs> Chaos <laughs> once again. I, if so I'm going to start a problem, person. I have to finish. Like, I have to solve it, you know? <laughs> she said, oh I, as a person who made Bellcast and as a person playing Mizu Mino, this is just my chaos meeting my chaos. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yes. All right, 10 minutes. I saw up still. Welcome back from the bathroom break. Sorry, a little second late there. I was daydreaming about what's to come. Um, hope everybody had a good bathroom break. Welcome back. We just left the chaotic scene where Voskar decimated citizens. A veil cast. Mizu got into a carriage, and you all ran up and saw this. Door shut, and now that dinosaur is carrying that carriage away. Welcome back. All right.
I guess we'll start with me and Mira since we're the ones who are up here. Witnessing this. These hills all decided to stay behind us and it's like, no, she got caught. Um, so I guess like, you guys around. Oh, you, so you came too? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, we have to yeah. Um, she kind of like looks around and she's like, we, got, we need to, to keep up. And yeah, I, we I, do. So at that point, Mira's going to cast Conjure Woodling Beings and summon eight pixies. Nice. What do yeah. they look like? Oh, so mine look like little, uh, cute little sea hags just like floating around. Because, <laughs> like, I haven't got with the woodland pixies yet, but I know those dirty little sea ones. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, they're just. <laughs> yeah, just floating giggling on <laughs> <laughs> Just floating around. All right. Um, you guys stand there. In the middle of the massacre. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna like look at the pixies and have them cast fly. Like, so three of them are gonna cast fly on me, Celia, and Seer, so that we can just fly and keep up with this. And then I'm just gonna have them fly along with us. Okay, you all. They start giggling around you and casting magic as you all start glowing a little bit and rising off the ground. Before you know it, you're able to control your movement and you can fly. Where do you want to go? Very familiar. Dash action. <laughs> right. <laughs> or Peta. We're superheroes now. Alright, where are you going? Uh, just to keep up with this um, carriage that has Mizu in it, I, I think I'm personally on like reconnaissance vibes. I don't think I'm trying. I, I am worried that she's been taken, but I don't know of the context. I'm just trying to make sure I don't lose sight on my sister who is a walking bomb. Oh. Yeah, in order to get a better read on the situation, I'm going to have one more pixie cast Detect Thoughts on the carriage so that I can hear what kind of like Mizu, they, she can tell me what Mizu is thinking essentially with that. I think, I, I like think they have what's going to on see, in Mizu's head. I think they have to see them because the carriage would have no thoughts and that's the only thing they can see. So they'll have they're to get like, here. the pixie will have to go down and there's like a window, but there's like a little curtain on it. So the pixie can roll a perception check. Yeah, okay. Maybe within thirty feet of them, and they can pick up any, any any thinking creature within thirty feet of them. Oh, they can. Perception? Okay, so they just need to get a yeah. little closer. Yeah, that okay. was in that twenty for the pixie's perception, so twenty four. Oh, that's perfect because they could already do it within thirty feet, anyways. Um, oh, and okay. because it was in that twenty, I'll give you even a little bit more. So oh, this shit? inside the cart, you can hear the thinking inside of a man, who is almost like his thoughts are ticking very quickly into different directions. Uh, but he's thinking about the benefits of bringing forth a huge new fighter at the foot of the Quins, given the traumatic events that have transpired and leave everyone uh, distressed. And then he starts speaking to Mizu. He leans forward. He's got this big, scruffy face that looks very dirty. Kind of got this, like, double chin that kind of wraps up to this, like, furry metal armor that kind of goes down and he's well decorated with different it looks like uh, different stones that are carved to look like claws he's got different claws almost like war medals and he leans forward what's your name mm, princess Mizu Minu of the Azirian kingdom did you miss it when I said it three times earlier what brings a princess this far out of the water um I don't know, like, uh, making friends, uh, like I said, I'm a saleswoman, so selling things, uh, maybe merging ties with my kingdom and other kingdoms, you know, all that fun stuff. To understand you clearly, princess, your idea of mending kingdoms together is massacring an entire wing of civilians? Hmm. Uh, your guards should have been stronger? interesting point. So what do you do wish? You to sit at the foot of the Quins and detail your story for sympathy? Um, no, I'm I'm not one for sympathy. Usually people aren't sympathizing with me. They're just kind of like uh, empowering me or building me up. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really have any things to even feel sympathy over in my life. My life is pretty great. So what brings you here? Why are we riding in this carriage, princess? Business. M money. Isn't 
this kingdom all about money too? That's like the only two things I've ever heard: money and and fighting and power. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna give you what you wish. I'm gonna let you fight in our arena. I'm gonna tell the Quins about it, and maybe they'll know. Maybe they won't. And if you survive, you keep your life. And if you don't, the opposite. And, and to make so your punishment more fair, given how many you have massacred of my men, I'm gonna put a few friends in there to help you out. Mm, thanks, but no thanks. I don't need any of your friends. I can do it all by myself. No. My friends have a lot of teeth, and they like people like you. Outsiders. With a lot of... pizzazz. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I, kn I know I have pizzazz, but uh, I, like I said earlier, I'm not really a fighter. I... I make things that fight right well you can show that because the punishment for murder here is fighting in the ring don't worry we're on our way just sit back I think you'll do well you know I was in the ring once and I won now look at me well since we're like getting to know each other more and I guess asking each other questions uh with your laws here and everything, what happens if your, like, leader gets murdered or killed? Is it the same you fight, or is it, like, worse? Hmm. We'll figure it out if it ever were to happen. But don't you don't worry. You... I wouldn't even want to face the Quins. Don't you think that should be, like, something you're worried about now, considering, like, at least two kingdoms I can name off the top of my head want your leader's head on a pike? You're best you're... worrying about your own life at the moment, princess. Okay, well, it's a weird way to compliment me, but thank you. He just sits back and crosses his arms. The little fairy just kind of, like, signals back to you. Uh, if you're trying to read Muzu's thoughts, uh, it's radio silence between a couple I'm so pretties in her head, and that's about it. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely wasn't even in yours. In his. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is he thinking after that conversation that they just had? What's his first thoughts on Mizu? <laughs> I'm genuinely curious. Like, is he wanting Mizu, like, immediately dead? Or is he like, hmm, value? I mean, if you meet Mizu, you either love her or you want to kill her. So, I mean, it's 50-50 at this point. That's true. All right, as you're following this cart, it kind of goes and ducks into the jungle. Um, as you guys are flying in the air, you see you're going into between some mountainous areas, uh, and this swarm of pterodactyls kind of swoops up beside you guys, just flying with you as this cart's going deeper in. Um, we made friends. I'm studying them very thoroughly. I'm also looking at... Stop, stop. I'm also looking at them like, wow. No, I need to see the reflexes. Don't stop her. I'm flying around it. I'm like, oh, wow, look at all kinds of angles on this thing. Avoiding mm -hmm. <laughs> it. Cute. Uh, <laughs> the cart stops, and you're kind of in between these two mountainous areas. The light mist and fog make it kind of hard to see perfectly what's happening in the cart. As you can, like, lower down, you can see a little better, but you're kind of a little closer to the ground. Um... Inside, you see the guy open the door and step out. Princess, come with me. She's gonna follow him. And is he by himself? Is it just him, Mizu, and then the the? It's dinosaur, yeah. The dinosaur, the yeah, it's him. Okay, just curious. Okay, thank you. Continue. Uh, he will walk with you, and you'll see some torches that are lit up on either side. As it's kind of darker, as the. Uh, the sun is kind of distorted from some rain clouds and as you walk in there's more double-sided torches kind of come up to these like rock steps that go up and he leads you up it seems like these steps take forever um roll a strength check as he looks oh, you back at you are we watching this by the way yes watching our sweat that was a while four. <laughs> Okay, as you're walking up, it just gets so much of your leg almost like gives in before you catch yourself as he looks back. A little bit longer. Do you think you can make it? 
Uh, and where I'm from, it's usually customary that uh, the guards carry the princesses up the stairs. So I think I've, uh, you know, played along in y'all's traditions long enough. It's kind of time to uh, return the favor. He reaches out his hand. Uh, she's going to stare at it and wait for him to, like, gesture in some way that he's going to, like, bridle style carry her. All right. Uh, strength check versus his as he reaches up and grabs your arm and starts walking up the steps. He's oh, that one, baby. <laughs> he's, he's perfect. perfect, he got a 22. He just grabs you oh and starts yanking you. You don't even have time to touch every step as he's pulling you up like two steps at a time. Um, you go up almost like 80, 90 feet before you're, you're standing at this ledge of this large opening that's kind of blocked off by these mountain ranges around it where the pterodactyls, there's way more flying around as this open arena. At the top of it, or it looks like the sharp teeth taken from dinosaurs, thousands of them lining the top, protecting, maybe keeping people from leaving. It goes down maybe like 60 feet of uh, dirt, and there's stone. There seems to be like a little creek down there. There are places where people can sit that are high up enough the ground that obviously this is supposed to be viewed by a bunch of people. Um... And he's going to just let go of your arm and look out. If you survive this, princess, maybe, maybe the Quins will want to speak with you. And maybe they will get angry with me for potentially sending the princess of the underwater kingdom to her death. But rules are rules. No one kills I'm going to send man. two of my pixies in. They're going to use their superior invisibility. And I'm going to send them in to go and hover with Mizu and be around her during this time in case they need to do something. They become the colors of the forest as they swarm. Mizu, you feel a light breeze, but nothing no too noticeable on your shoulders. As, as above your shoulders are two. Uh, as the guard finishes uh, talking, she's going to go, yeah, uh, looking forward to speaking with the Quins, actually, to let them know uh, not only are their guards weak, but they are also uh, very rude. So it was nice uh, meeting you, I guess. Yes, very nice meeting you. If you could just stand, stand on this circle. Uh, before she stands on the circle, she's gonna drop her jaw. Is that that's still the way Voskar comes out, right? You hear this bellowing <laughs> laughter from inside because he didn't think he'd be away that long. <laughs> Immediately, as he puts his hand down, your jaw kind of unhinges and kind of stretches open, like kind of like that person in Beetlejuice. Anyways, mm -hmm. um, Voskar starts crawling yeah. out, immediately crawling right to him and into his mouth as he's like, Ugh! and just transferring from body to body with his limbs before he comes back into him. And he goes, uh, Do me a favor, and uh, can you, like, rip him apart from the inside? Like, uh, can you just, like, you know, like, bust out? Like, just make him explode? Is that possible? Is that something you can do? Oh. I do admit you had quite a good plan back there. It really fucking hurt. But I'm all better. But now... I got you out safe. I have an even better plan, Mizu. I oh. control a top general who said he would let the Quins know I heard everything. Why don't I take you straight to the Quins and we can kill him ourselves and bring back Olivine. And then Bruntoro will see our power. Oh, he just let that slip right. out of his mouth? I, I hear you and I'm with you, but uh, there, there's like levels to this a little bit. So like we're going to talk to them and then we're going to get the book and then we'll do all of that after that. Because like if we have the book, like you said, it's going to make all that a lot easier later. Oh, but we're so close. Why not take it now, Mizu? Listen, and he grabs you by your shoulders and pulls you close. We have been on this adventure for so long. Trusting and not trusting. Feelings and not feelings. You and I can finish this. Just puts his big hand on the back of your head. It goes from like your temple all the way to your temple. You and I can rule this world together. Kiss me. Huh? You heard me. Kiss me. If you want to rule all of this together, then... You can at least give me a kiss, right? Be serious, Mizu. We're talking. Rule the world. I'm being very 
serious. I, I mean, that he just kind slams of his face onto you. Are you pretty sure it maybe knocks one of your teeth out? And just black slime you feel crawl onto your face, kind of suck into your pores like some other planar activity that your body's not used to. Before he pulls away, you see the dark funnels of death. You see the nine hells beneath. You see pools of magma where ships disintegrate trying to cross. And then it just pops into existence and he pulls back. Misu! Misu! Damn! Hmm. I'll take it. You did what I want. And, you know, I'm in a really generous mood right now, so since you listened to my plan earlier, I guess I'll listen to your plan right now. Perfect. It's a shame your sisters and Mira could be here to hear this. You muted. Perfect. It's a shame your sisters and Mira couldn't be here to hear this. And just grabs you by the shoulder. We did. Shall we? <laughs> to the cart. Loading outside awkwardly. Uh, Mizu will curtsy a little bit and, like, kind of have a side smirk as she walks to the cart. Um, you notice he's drooling a lot more than usual. And as you kind of, like, look up as you're walking down the steps, he's just kind of, like, spitting out saliva from his mouth because he's not used to, like, saliva. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay. You need me to get you, like, some water or something? No! I'll be fine. Why do y'all do that, you people of the material plane? What do you mean? Never mind. He gets back into the carriage. Um, you guys see them go back into the carriage. Why did they bring her all the way out here just to take her? Okay. Well, what that's not exactly into? what happened. <laughs> did they no. see, like, if they could see me, did they see me just, like, kiss this random guard, too? Because I assume yeah, that was we did. what he and looks like. And my were invisible, hovering First, over you the entire time. <laughs> First we saw him yank you up those stairs, then we saw you kiss him. We're confused. Yeah. How do you like toxic men who hurt you, Hilo? <laughs> so the pixies come back and break. tell me everything. What <laughs> Cause I was living, I was like, not a, I said, but he about to dislocate her arm, I'll beat his ass. Okay, yeah. the cart takes off, you guys are just watching the cart, I guess. Anything you guys want to do in the air, seeing all that? <laughs> I'm starting to doubt that she's arrested. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely going to have the pixies come back over right. and, like, tell us everything that just transspired. Okay, with yeah, for sure. Me too and Boss Car, for sure. Yeah, undoubtedly. They tell you everything that just happened. You know, yeah. Boss Car. Um, I guess I get, I, this is like a Colosseum, like an arena. We can tell that from the outside. We can still see, like, the yeah, open Yeah, it doesn't top. come above okay. the ground. It's all in the ground in a giant Super Bowl style stadium, kind of. Okay. Yeah, Mi Mira. Oh, fuck. What's my name? <laughs> Seir is looking for. Uh, is hoping to find the Quins, and she thought that's the most likely place for Misa to be going. So she's like, "Oh, this is not what I expected." No. But now that she's leaving, she's like, "Okay, this maybe, maybe st at the second arc." So we're these. Also, we, since I'm casting, um, uh, pass without trace. We're like these dark, like ma a shooting star, but like instead of light energy, it's like darkness moving through the sky. It's like these three, like. Me, Celia, and uh, me are just these three beams of light as we are these uh, of darkness, I guess, moving through the light. So it's like they can't see us, but they're like, what is that? But <laughs> they don't look like people, so that's good. So yeah, I, I keep following the the uh, carriage as it starts to go somewhere else. Confused and asking questions. Didn't he pull her? Why does she kiss him? Why is he slobbering? What's going on? Like this is wild. And then pictures yeah. are filling me in, and I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, great. <laughs> The Quinn's is. She looks really um, confused. Also, do the Pixies mention that Voskar said that he wants to release Alavi? Is that in the transcript? Did the, the <laughs> recorder get that? <laughs> I thought they would. Yes, the recorder yeah. did get that. He said, let's just release Alavi mm -hmm. and, and we'll take care of it and rule the world. Yeah, that part happens in the story and Seer's like, mm? No, we heard that right. The Pixies said that right. I knew Buffer I couldn't trust him. Demon, and we're I surprised knew I in this him. instance. But like this whole thing was like, I'm with Brun Toro, and now he's like, to get to Brun Toro, I'm gonna raise Olivine. Like he, he's not getting that he's like so low on the totem pole. He's like, I'm like, yeah. it's like this guy's dick, it's like this guy's dick. And, and he's then clearly Toro admitting he can't do something fully himself either. At the same time, at relying on other people to like <laughs> pleasure his bosses. 
He's not giving what he thinks he's giving. This is all happening as we're flying through the air. He's not giving what he thinks he's giving. <laughs> Mirror looks back. Celia, you doing okay? Yeah, I don't know. Um, so she's not arrested. No, and... not arrested. She's going to raid the Olivine with Boscart right now. Killing the Which is bad. Which is bad. Allegedly. Which is bad. Yeah. 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 He's blinded Mizu, so, You know, I thought Mizu was bad. Is Mizu bad? Mizu's bad. No, Mizu's, Mizu's always been an opportunist. Know, on, on the line. I think it is okay, interesting, okay. you know, like... I mean, I wouldn't Raisin be Olivine, was bad. Yeah, I mean, Raisin Ali was never really a problem for her. It kept the people in the sea in the sea and on land on land, but now the sea's all kind of fucked up. Like, if Olivine comes back and we can't be in the sea, then we're on the land, and he's like... Well, he's doing that head poppy thing he does, so we're just like, oh no. So it does mix Bad. things up. But that is also our sister. This is, I can't say, out of left field. I thought she was trying to kill mom, but she's trying to kill Rose Quinn. That's even wilder. So, <laughs> also, can we see your mom? No, she's <laughs> Okay. And she's like, so we can all, we are all recognizing that Mizu and Arazaline are the same person doing the same thing, trying to kill yeah. Rose Quinn to release all of you. Great. Just just so we all know that next time she denies it, we can all be like, actually. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the, <laughs> the cart that's pulls sick. over. Uh, the general or whatever opens the door. There's like some people that are, it got a big trailer. Um, there seems to be a dinosaur resting. Oh, there's some trees cut down. It looks like they're collecting certain sharp wood, maybe to build things. Um, the general um, ju gets out. Ew! Uh, yes, sir! And he just kind of ho holds his h hand out. And, and he's like, I need you to take me to the Quins. I'm, I'm, the Quins are back in the main city here on the outskirts. Yes, I need you to take me there. In your cart? Take me, or I'll kill you. <laughs> oh, all right. Yes, good. Gets this guy into the cart. Um, now they know where to go. They go back and <laughs> turn that way into the city. Um, Mizu, as you're sitting there, uh, Voskar is just like holding the guy's back of his neck as he's holding onto the reins. I have to say, this is, this is a very nice cart. Where did you have it made? I'm at the top of the food chain, you weirdo. I, I have all the good stuff. I'm a general, top-notch, have all the friends. Clean out of friends. All the friends, really. People who have friends don't say that. Pulls up to the front of this giant, uh, co uh, tall column pantheon, almost, with this big structure that's on the top of the mountain that goes up. It just looks like it gets bigger and bigger as it goes up. Um, Voskar pulls the cart around, thanks the guy, pulls you out, Mizu, and stands in front of it. All right, you're arrested. You're going to the Quins. We got our story straight. Yeah, uh, but the second we get in there, you're going to shut the fuck up, and I'm going to do the talking. Yes, yes, well, I have to do the whole intro thing. I work for this place, right? That's my character. I know, duh, but after that, Jesus Christ. Who is that? <laughs> you say that a lot. Who is that? <laughs> the man of her dreams. You wouldn't know. It's an Azirian Kingdom thing. One of those, like... You know you know how I was talking about what I would love earlier is, like, me being the figurehead of something and a bunch of, like, really stupid men, like, flocking to me and, like, just loving me? It's kind of like that. Okay, whatever. And he's going to take up the stairs. Meanwhile, you guys see this happening. What are you doing? Yeah, what are we doing? I look over at Seer and I'm like, are we letting them do this? What is happening? Oh god, no. Um, once we now that I know that, that, that that's Vaskar and that's Mizu and they make it to the place, I think Seer flies and lands it's behind been. them. Yeah. And she's like, oh, you thought you were going to leave us behind? Mm. Damn it! Oh, hey, Bossy. I'm a general I can smell now. You from here. You're Whatever it makes you feel better. Can't just jump us when I take the credentials. Well, we weren't trying to hide anything, so I guess we can all do this. Yeah, if you weren't trying to hide anything, we can all do this. Just to be clear, you don't have any more charges of that magical box, do you? Well, I like to keep it's you on your toes, box. so... 
You'll never know. No, I'm calling your bluff. I'm calling your bluff. Let's do this. He's going to turn around and start walking up these steps. Um, Mizu's going to follow him and just kind of like blow off the fact that they're there. <laughs> Not really like paying much attention to it. Uh, immediately you come upon guards upon two sets of stairs going up. Um, it's very damp and very uh, humid here. Um, immediately the guards just like bow and move out of the way. And this happens like five or six times before you actually get up and inside somewhere. Um, you hear roars of dinosaurs and stuff inside. They take you into this long room, kind of on the outside of the room, as there are these dinosaurs just going at it. Two T-Rexes as these people kind of stand by and they're like training them. Um, you kind of go through this big room where you see people who are dressed very nice. You kind of go up before you lead into this big room that has glass dome that's shattered. With the, it looks like this room almost is like the attic that's unkept, but it's massive with these temple stones and large shattered window. But there's really nothing else in the room except for two big chairs with candles around them lit, but nobody else is in the room. Yeah, well, everybody saluted me this way. I think this is it. This definitely seems like a ruler of a nation kind of thing, right? Your first throne room and take it? Yeah, it seems like the vibe. What, do they have, like, a bell here? I think you just, <laughs> just like... sit in the chair, Voskar. That's what you have to do to summon the king and queen. You have to sit in their chair mm -hmm. and yeah, bring them yeah. forth. You, clearly, you don't mm -hmm. know how throne, wo throne room There's, like, a little sensor okay. on it. Well, would the know. general sit in their chair? Yeah, it's a summoning technique that you clearly don't know a lot about. It's all I'm saying. Don't be a dick in the instance. Just listen, Jesus. It's, it's on the glutes. Get engaged or prostate. Oh my gosh, he's gonna go walk and sit on the throne and drape his leg on it. Okay, you happy? A, a dart goes right through his head and sticks in it. Oh! Oh! Well, it's trapped. Oh! You think he can't die? That's just awkward now. No, it's not killing me, it's, it's killing awkward. the guy though. Oh, oh the general. I, I can't thought he was dead or Um, Ooh. walking up the steps, you see this really short halfling who's got these um, big glasses on that are very thin and he's got this hand crossbow and this big um, kind of like shawl that rapes over him that drags the ground no one sits in B. Quinn's chair but what do you want general oh fuck man ah uh. Yeah, where the Quinn's at, I want to have a talky talk. He just looks. Dispel magic, and you see. Poof. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not going to work. I mean, clever eye, but I'm not fucking magic. Oh, God, what are on these arrows? He's not magical. He's just weird. Sorry. Yeah. You know, this is kind of like the whole reason that we're here, actually. Uh, I need to talk to them about how uh, weak and uh, actually very rude the guards here are. Yeah, you passed through about seven sets of guards. You didn't think they'd notice something was up with the cruelest of our generals who didn't make a sound while walking up. This entire room is being monitored currently. What do you want, and how did you get here, and who is in him? Uh, I have valuable information for you, Princess Mizumino of the Azirian Kingdom, and she's going to stick her hand out. The Quins can hear you. You can speak to them. Russ Quinn, Princess Mizumino of the Azirian Kingdom, your life is in danger. You know, I much prefer a face-to-face -face conversation. Really helps get my point across. They want you to get rid of your demon. Yeah, Fine. You and us both. To cast <laughs> banishment on him. No, I'm doing so. Much. Oh, oh, the guy screams <laughs> from the holes in his head. Ooh, idiot. Technically friendly fire. Technically. Yeah. If anyone's watching, we didn't do that. The guy walks over to this big box and opens it. The Quins want you to put away all your magic casting and your weapons. Celia tries to get into the Everyone box. Has to use. <laughs> See, not, not you. you. Know you're the leader. <laughs> Do we have to? 
I mean, y'all are fully weaponized. We're not gonna do any shenanigans here. Take me to hold a crusty scepter. He closes. Uh, great. Okay, the queens are interested. What brings the princesses of Azir to Veilcast? We stopped a war. That wanted to kill you. Correct. They are going to ask for every detail, and they are not going to stop asking questions until you get bored of talking. So what are you going to guys tell them in general? I'm already bored of talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I get it, but the, this person is like, we're not getting answers back. They're, he's just like relaying that they want to say things to us. Yeah, and they can hear us, whatever we're saying, allegedly. Yeah, if, if, if Russ Quinn is not, like, speaking to us, then she's kind of like... Because Seer's questions are for the person who killed Olivine, which is obviously not this man. So she's like, you can't answer me, and if they aren't, like, going to answer, then she's going to wait to see if they like us. So she'll let Mizu, like... She's going to see what Mizu's plan is, so she's like, all right, you you got kid, you got, got arrested for this. So, uh, Mizu, you. Mizu will tell them, like, basically every single thing that has started from like the start of their journey since it's it's definitely a long like interrogation she's gonna go from the fucking start of the sisters reuniting up until now but she's gonna spend like an extensive period of time talking about like everything that happened in Wimding and uh like the brining and all the other places like the sisters have investigated to like put pieces together and she's also uh gonna tell them about Arisaline and like what Arisaline's after in her plan Roll a persuasion check. Because we also came with receipts. Y'all thought I was going to kill him. Ha ha ha! I do have the... the God. That was a 25. Just because you ain't kill him yet, don't mean you ain't going to do it. Right. Uh, it was a 25. Um, the guy kind of turns to a chair, and he just kind of sits. And the wall starts to open in this shape. And out walks this... I mean, to you, probably looks like mid-60s, older man. Um, he's maybe four foot something. He's very short. Uh, he's got this red curly hair that's kind of cut back. Not so far as a mullet, but kind of comes up. But it's definitely lost some hair on the side a little bit. And the tips are gray. He's got this big mustache and beard and a big patch over his eye that has like it looks like disease or something coming from it spread on his face and in his skin he steps forward just kind of pushes it up a little bit so you want our help I guess maybe in a way but more than anything I just wanted you to be aware in case uh, things with our plan kind of go awry because if there's one thing I want to see it's my mom dead at the end of this so I'm going to do anything in my power to prevent her from killing you so you have a hey, find that comment. you have a, find a way to find the book I mean yep seems like that's where we're at right now we might have some leads but Nothing 100% solid. We're really kind of following in mom's track and, you know, we're smarter than her when we all put our heads together because we are her spawn after all. So uh, one of us is, or all of us together is better than one of her. So she's she's stuck right now, but I think we'll, we'll get her if we catch up to her. Find this book and bring it back. And our kingdoms can come together as one. We will forgive anything your mother has done. And take it as an odd act. Outside of a. Sounds like. Great history. Uh, and just for. Hallie Marks. What's your stance on Olivine? I know he's like. In your face. But I also know you didn't kill him. And I've. I know a little bit of history about BR Aggressive. And I know she was. In leagues, some would say, with her and her friends, and they work with Olivine. Well, where, where are we? Where are you at with that? You you like him? Away, Don? Under no circumstances can Olivine be made to return to the material plane. 
Simply put, I value my own life. I value my life as a protector. However, there is something you should know. Something that makes this a little more confusing. If I were to die by unnatural ways and Olivine was to return, he would no longer be immortal. Why is that? From everything we've studied in his power. He drives his power from bringing death to Bruntoro. Now that he is trapped here, there is no one for him to kill. He is useless. He will lose his power. You hear in your head, Mizu. Yes! I knew I felt something. He's totally vulnerable. Now's our chance, Mizu. Reach across the room and kill that old bastard. He's almost just like Vaskar. It's crazy. Uh, that, was that in my head or was... That was in, your, was head. in your head. Okay, um, she's gonna say... Should have put a little more uh, effort into that kiss. Uh, I'm not feeling it right now. Maybe later. Ah! He just screams in your head. So... I can tell you're sincere. Mainly because there is a zone of truth around here. this room. Oh. He brings up his hand and he summons a triceratops. That just kind of like, kind of lands in the room. He says, my friend. He knows when people are lying. And he can tell you are good. Follow him. And he will lead you to a stable where I will lend you some fighters to get that book, but you must bring it back, or they will turn on you. Um, also, a follow-up question. What are your intentions with this book? To tuck it away, or perhaps throw it in a volcano and destroy it once and for all. Oh, that's true. I like that. I'm gonna trust you since she's drawing the zone of truth here, so I'm mean, that not, not a bad idea. Do you think the lava would work? It's like a weird book. Not just any lava. No. It's gotta be across the world in the mountain of Crixen. Never been there before. Okay. It's where I'm, the, I'm happy you have plans. It's where the Araquilenti live. The scorpion people. There are scorpion people here. Welcome oh, to land, okay. princess. Have you seen shark people? They're very interesting to look at. They're cool. They're cool. What do you Thank mean you. by that? I, I've like read a, a like lot of heavy. bow shark folk. But anyways, I should get back. Well, perhaps we can do a, a sort of exchange program after this, and we can meet some scorpion folk, and you can meet Land some people. shark people, and we can just like have a nice... It'd be cute. Okay. Um, if you succeed this is... on this, this could be historic for our kingdoms. For the safety of land to water. Everything we from here to the sleepy, the, uh, wow, my, the, <laughs> sleeping slopes of agony, sleeping the, slopes yeah, of agony. The slippery, yeah, slippery slopes of agony. Thank you, it was slippering my mind. I was like, I was like um, what, <laughs> he's talking about this entire going down to Van Greech, Sumplin, <laughs> Azir could be secure. That does sound like a good, uh, idea. There are some, you know. I have some opinions about those who are in between us, so I do. Okay, okay. I like this plan. She kind of pulls through her sisters. It sounds honestly like the most thought out thing I've heard since we all got back up together, so. Mizu, no. I, listen, I know the kiss was abysmal. I don't know how to kiss. I don't even technically have lips, okay? There's no way for me to practice. <laughs> but you cannot do this plan. You'll go with your sisters and they'll have control of the book. We'll lose all power. They'll throw it in the volcano, Mizu. You and I, we need this. Just because I have come to an agreement with them on receiving aid and how not to use the book does not mean that I have come to any agreement whatsoever with them on how to use the book. But honestly, Mizu, you think you can go up against all of them? Let's say one of them has the book and you gotta wrestle it back. I'm pretty sure Celia can sit on you. I just watched you maul 34 civilians. I think we'll be okay. You would kill your own sisters to get the book. 
I I wouldn't kill my sisters to get to the book, but at this point, if I don't do something drastic, it'll all be for nothing. Great. He's going to go quiet. I guess everyone's looking at you. <laughs> it's like, and he's just got that, like, thoughts. what is that, like, that thousand yard stare or whatever, and she's just like, I'm so pretty. And her, like, head, that's, like, what her face is, like, always giving. Dead eyed. <laughs> okay, okay, Russ Quinn's gonna leave the room, that door's gonna shut. And the guy. Yeah, yep. Good plan. Gosh, trust issues. We recognize that, right? Uh, like everyone sure. in this room has trust issues right now, <laughs> dear. Does that include us, or like just every, like everyone else here? Oh yes, us included. It's a read for all. Mm. I don't think I have trust issues. I think my trust issues are, are founded. Like I just don't trust people because you know they aren't trustworthy. But like to the zoning of truth, and like he was just doing a lot. I don't think we need those spiders, but like. I was about to say, I think we should take the dinosaur, but I think we should ditch the fighters. I mean, it's people we can't account for, and also I don't want any of them getting the glory of killing Mom if it comes to it, which it probably will. You really Sorry, keep breaking so. that up. I guess we, yeah. I'm just going to choose to like, not talk about that. Um, willful delusion. I'm, I've learned that from who? You. Um, so, I'm pretty. Every time you mentioning Mom's dead, she's like, I'm pretty. <laughs> She's like, I'm not a murderer. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> um, yeah, we definitely need to have a chat with Mama, then we can figure out how things will go from there. But I do agree with you that I don't want to go with those fighters. Fair. Because what if, like, also, I'd feel bad if, like, what if Mom just slaughters them all and then we're like, hey, sorry, we killed her, but also all your people died. It's just so weird. Um, it gets and also, more messy we've, that way. We've seen their guards. It's not going to go well. Not good. Um, not good. Okay. Celia, what is it like for you hearing this talk about killing your mother? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I get new parents all the time. It's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a new dad last week. Like. <laughs> that, maybe three maybe dad will find somebody one. else and give us a new mom. <laughs> <laughs> I can drop one off. I, I, got, I got room to spare. Y'all got two parents. I got three, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are we doing? The guy's just sitting in the chair looking at you guys with his hand crossbow. <laughs> um, going with the dinosaur, I guess, right? And ditching the guards? Yeah, the I mean, dinosaur gonna is going to take you to the guards. To the guards. Yeah, I don't think we need the dinosaur because also oh. they don't know where the book is. We know where the book is, so I guess we can just... Yeah leave we could we'll just we'll just come back with them for an update we gotta go find arista arista knows where the location is so we're going back to arista and okay. we're not taking the dinosaur all right yeah when you get well, outside really this place... take the dinosaur no, i think we should take the dinosaur yeah we'll i'm bring the dinosaur not with it. us but yeah. not take it to where we're supposed to go we're just <laughs> gonna take a dinosaur yeah, like this. <laughs> if this dinosaur dies he's gonna be back because this is his friend the so dinosaur no, is, it. as it you're walking down back. the steps the dinosaur is not going towards the entrance towards your sister the dinosaur is <laughs> leading you to a stage Hey, come on! Hey, buddy, come on! This is a yeah. This is a big Triceratops. <laughs> I'm trying to coax tree. this Triceratops to the woods or to the sewer. Okay, where give we me an uh, animal handling check, but I'll give you advantage so they can help you. But this is the one check. Okay. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. That was good. Not twenty plus I, four. I so knew 24. it. <laughs> oh, this dinosaur gets sidetracked, even though it's a summoned dinosaur, <laughs> and it will eventually it. dissipate. It this is. is it turns with you. You know, it's it's. It can go <laughs> about like hey. thirty feet. Like you can, so it can keep up with you. Yeah, Hopefully. you guys get back to the sewer. We druids. So they like us. Uh, okay. okay. Well, Rissy. I kind of look around for her to like do that thing where she like jumps out of somewhere. Uh, yeah, she's like right beside you. She comes into frame. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, we met the Qu a Quinn. We didn't really address like is B our like B R Quinn. Like is that are we assuming that they are no longer with us? Like he shot that dude. Not the point. We talked to the Quinn, uh, uh, and we are gonna go do the mom thing, and then if it goes well, that's gonna unite. Us and Veilcast, and they'll uh, not be mad that uh, Mizu slaughtered a bunch of people. So they know about the death book. 
Yes. And they're just going to let Mizu have it. No. No, no. Mizu didn't really agree to that part. She, she, We agreed to help get the book back. Russ Quinn wants to hide the book away or throw it into a volcano very far away and destroy it so no one can ever use it. And we... She looks at she looks at Arissa telepathically. We know what Mizu wants to do with that book, so we're all on the same page here. So we're good. She's gonna She's walk like, up to that, Mizu face. <laughs> and just kind of like reach out for your hand and be like, "I've really missed you, sister. I missed you so much. It's honestly so good to see you again, and I'm I'm glad you got some closure about everything. Thank you. And we really are family, and. That makes me worry about you sometimes. Like, sometimes, Mizu, you're not the nicest when you don't get what you want. I mean, yeah, because I, I should be getting what I want all the time. Right, and that's a topic we continue to disagree about when we meet each other downstairs when we have to use the bathroom and stuff. But this is a big thing, and if you don't get this big thing, I'm afraid you might be really mean. It makes me worry for my other family members. I mean, to be honest with you, if everybody doesn't want to worry about anything, y'all should just give me the book when we get there. Ruthie hears in her head, she wants to kill mom. She's going to look back at you and then look back at Mizu and just give you a hug, Mizu. No, uh, she's going to hug her back. She's going to look at you and say, You know, I'm really excited for you. You finally get to see the thing you've always wanted to see, but I don't, I don't think I need to be there. I think what you and your sisters and mom, I think I'd rather be at home and help them. And Vafiel has agreed to take me. I don't mind. I could use it. I could come back to get you all. I just need to sleep. And she goes, I want to go back home. You know, I, I think it's a good plan. One, because I think you've already had an, enough adventure for a while. And uh, two, I wouldn't mind, you know, getting a word from you about what's going on back home. Yeah, we're not exactly sure how uh, safe home is. We did stop the brining, but we don't know how bad it got and what it's like. We left so long ago and... So it could be, home could be a new experience, let's say. So just keep that in mind. But I think you'd be the best to, to help get it back in order. And it's kind of ironic, too, because here we have been on this big diplomatic adventure, and I feel like here I am neglecting home when that's supposed to be my duty. So I, I'd really like to know what's going on with the people and with Dad. I hate to leave you again, but I'll make sure to update you. I know you'll be safe. Okay, well... And... She uh, pulls out the book that Vafiel has been reading. She's going to show you a map. You have to go northwest to the almost the edge of the cliffs that go off and drop before you get into other parts of the world. Um, but there is a temple at a waterfall. And she's going to show you... She's going to show you the correct rune sequence and that lullaby and then show you how to put that key in the right place and then you're good she and she's gonna make sure you write it down or copy it somehow into your memories and she's going to shut it and take it with her and give you all a hug and tell you good luck uh see so your gra gra grasps her hand and she's like just so you know, I think I won because uh, little X equal signs in the Gorgonline tribe, so I think I found out a fact before you did. <laughs> well, technically I had it in one of my books that I stole from the library. I just hadn't read it yet. So you didn't know it yet? You win this time, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Bye. Just gonna take off. Oh, wait. Oh. Tell Harriet I said hi. Oh, oh, okay, Harriet. I remember her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it, Celia. Uh, oh, wait a minute. You. Uh, you just dipping out on us? I'm sorry, Harry. I really gotta go. 
My dad needs me. Hey, I know, but you know, if you need any extra help around the kingdom, you know, I'm not trying to impose, but... Do you want to go with me? I mean, if you'll have me. Okay, but you're not my boyfriend. I see where this is going. Hey, hey, there's no boyfriend. Just, you know, help you clean up some dirty water. I can just say, you know, you are going home, Rissy, and these are your family now, so... They and can go home too. Just like you, they've also lost their home, so why not make a new home for yourself altogether? <laughs> you say islands. Okay, but I get to show you what part of the library is yours, and I get to select the books. Yeah, yeah that's fine with me. What about you, Fizz? Yeah, it sounds good to me. I mean, I was, do we gotta sleep in a library? Okay, let's go. <laughs> There's lots of rooms. Vafiel's gonna start drawing out a circle. Um, good luck. I have no worries. And he's going to look at you, Celia. I'll see you back in his ear. Yeah, I think. This is going to complete the circle and it starts to light up. What do you mean you think? No, you are, right? Coming back to his ear? The, I don't think that was ever the ending point. I don't... Wait, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> they teleport out. They're gone. <laughs> what are you like? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> A long rest will come back. It's fine. <laughs> You're in the sewers by yourself. What do you want to do? Yeah, I want to rest before this I journey. Love a, I'm going to have a short rest to get some wild shapes back. I don't want to run to the jungle. That part. As Judy as I am. I mean, we do have a dinosaur for uh, however oh, we do have long. A dinosaur. However long. Yeah, but as you go to rest, whoever is taking turns watching and your little sewer camp that you didn't even want to Fade be in the first place, the dinosaurs just go... Like, first of all, can't even fit through the hole, so it's just up there. And it's just gonna... I've been petting it the whole time through the hole. <laughs> it's just, just modeling his I, face. It disappears. I've Gumbo. No, Gumbo. <laughs> Do you guys have things to make camp? Um... I literally looked at my back, I was like, wait, am I sitting down? Uh... I have, I have a boomerang, if anyone was curious. Fun fact. <laughs> I, I do not have anything useful. <laughs> oh, I have a tinder kit, a torch. Alright, roll a survival a check. Oh, okay. Yeah, roll a survival check. A 26. 13. Alright, you're able to get a fire going. And you can find some spots. Hopefully you have a mat. If not, you're sleeping on, you know, sewer floor. But you can take Let's turns. And you taking a long rest? Uh, I just need a I just need a short rest. Oh, just short rest? Yeah, I, yeah. A yeah. short rest yeah. is fun. Okay. Yeah. Good with short. We're taking a well, short she's rest. Chasing mom, so. We'll pause there and we'll come back for episode forty three and figure out what happens from there. Sound good? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, everybody, for breaking into there, you're gonna get three thousand experience points. Oh. And for talking and getting the Quins on your side, going an alternate route than never talking to them, I'm going to give you an extra 1,500 experience points. 4,500? Let's go! You need 5,500 more to level up, so you need to do something big. wonder what we have planned. <laughs> well, we're big. going to, to master her, yeah, maybe a maternal figure, and uh, get the book we've been chasing forever. So, And then also, also like once we get the book, I feel like we have to deal with Mom, which is going to be a whole thing, because... Role play, the drama, the inner party conflict, and then also what we do with the book, role play, drama, <laughs> inner party conflict. It's like, all right, real initiative, you guys are fighting each other. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> it's going to be super cute. I love it. But you avoided a fight tonight, which is good. We did. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I didn't want to fight in the library. Awesome. Thanks, that. everybody, for watching. Thank you guys for playing. We'll see you next time for episode 43. Good night. Bye. Bye.